Hey guys, I'm Stephanie, and this is Steph Stove, and today we're going to be making us some great apple butter just um, as the season turns to fall and we get used to all the wonderful fall things. Now in South Georgia, it's hot. It's still in the 80s, so it's kind of hard to think fall, but we still get excited over the fall time and the wonderful fall flavors. So let's get ready and make this great apple butter recipe. Let's go. All right, to get our apple butter started, I have right here five and a half pounds of apples. And these apples that I have are gala apples and they're a couple of different sizes. And to do the five and a half pounds, depending on your size, this is 18 apples. And if you're not sure, you do need to measure these out to be, um, to be sure that you do have at least five and a half, you can't even do six pounds, but a fairly soft apple. Nothing like a Granny Smith that'll be too tart or too firm, but a rather soft one like Gala, Fuji, um, an apple of that sort. So to start these off, I'm gonna get my apple here, little corer here, and I'm going to put a paper towel down here because these will probably juice. I've already washed these off and removed most of the stem and you're going to core them to get the core out. And I'll push those aside into my trash sack. Put that to the side. And then you are gonna chop these up. So even in this half that I have, I'm gonna come back in and chop it again. And I'm gonna do little small dices. I would say about maybe a quarter of an inch. So. About that size is what we want. So we're gonna go through each of these, cut all of our apples up, and then come back and finish putting them together. All right, I have all of our apples chopped and processed. As you can see, they're all chopped. Nice, I'm trying to get where you can see them. And small, there they are. <laughs> and um, this yield, there was 18 apples, and it yielded about 18 cups of chopped apples. And then not to worry because these are gonna completely cook down. So our mixture that we're gonna to have to go over our apples is gonna be just a warm, cinnamony goodness, and it's just yummy, yummy, yummy. And to do that, we are gonna to top it with, this is one cup of packed light brown sugar, and we are gonna to add to that three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, and I'm going to whisk these two together slightly. Get them kind of somewhat incorporated before we start adding the other ingredients. Apple, cinnamon, sugar, mm, what could be better than that? And now to this, we're gonna add, of course, cinnamon. So we'll add a tablespoon of cinnamon. Now, if you like a lot of cinnamon, you can add a tablespoon and a half. I wouldn't do two tablespoons because it is gonna be fairly strong, just a smidge more. I don't think I quite had it leveled out enough. And then after we add our um, cinnamon to it, we are gonna add some cloves. Now you could even, um, if you wanted to, some, add some apple pie spice or some other things but, uh, not cloves, excuse me, I had nutmegs in here. You can add cloves to this. I didn't have cloves, that's why I'm gonna choose to use nutmeg. And you're gonna use about an eighth of a teaspoon. So it's just gonna give that warmth to it. Sometimes I'll substitute these back and forth, and that's why. So this one, I'm using nutmeg. And then we're also gonna add just a little bit of salt to this, so we're gonna add a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, and this is just regular salt that I'm adding. Adding, excuse me, kind of got ahead of myself. And then we're also going to add to this a teaspoon and a half. Here's my teaspoon measurement. Teaspoon and a half. I have to check this quickly. Make sure I see them correctly. I didn't have my reading glasses on. And sometimes those little, little words on there get just a little bit hard to see. 
Those of you that use readers can understand exactly what I mean by that. Oh, mm, mm, mm. Ooh, this is smelling good, this little crumble. Look at that, just that goodness. Sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg. Doesn't that just sound like fall and a warmth of vanilla? Right there, so I'm just going to incorporate this together and be very gentle with it because remember the vanilla's in there. You don't want it clumped and you don't want it all over you either. So just going to get this incorporated. Now, there is nothing that we're going to add on top of the apples, such as a liquid. We're not worried about adding lemon juice or anything like that because we're not wanting to keep them bright. We want them to cook down and to darken. So, and if you notice, this is in my big pot. And if it looks familiar, yes, this is in my crock pot. So that's what's the beauty of this. We are going to set it. And as there was an old fashion um, saying that you would hear in some advertising, we're going to set it and forget it. So I'm just going to cover this down on top of the apples. The apples have enough moisture that they're going to release. I did not peel my apples either because I want that pectin from, um, from the skin and all that extra flavor, color, and um, nutrients as well. So we're just going to cover this over our apples. And I'm going to put it over here on my crock pot. I'll turn my crock pot on low. Cover it. And in 10 hours, we will have the start of our apple butter. So it's about 1045 at night. And so we're gonna wake up about 845 in the morning to amazing smelling um, apple butter coming out of the kitchen. So I'll see you in the morning and let's check on our apple butter. All right, it's 8.52. Let's reveal. Oh, look at that. Put that moisture back in there. Ooh, it is smelling so good. In here, and look. Look at all this liquid that was released as the apples cooked. And remember, I did not. I'm talking a little softly because... Um, got some of my family that are just getting ready in the morning and I don't want to be too loud but we didn't add any liquids to so look how much that our apples gave off and even as I'm moving the apples around they're kind of getting mushy which is exactly what we want so at this point I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab my immersion blender and I'm going to blend these up <laughs> Every bit is blended. I'm being very careful with this. Obviously, this is extremely hot. double check. I'm going to take my wooden spoon and go back and check to make sure that I've got any. We don't want to leave any chunk in every bit of it pureed. And if you didn't have an immersion blender, you could in batches put this into a blender, but you ha would have to do it in multiple batches. Change hands. Texture. So I'm just checking again, and you'll do this several times. Just checking to be sure you don't have any of those chunks.
looking our consistency looks pretty good at this point as you can even see on the back of my immersion blender it is very very um pureed consistency no chunks is what we're looking for at this point so i'm just going to give another stir to be sure oh the smell is so good the apple spices mm. now you can see it's still very loose so i'm going to shake off the extra and at this point we're going to leave it on low put the lid back on it and cook it for two more hours. All right, we're one hour in, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna take the lid off. And we're gonna check and we are going to stir occasionally all the way through to be sure we have no sticking. Mm, the smells are amazing. And you see we're so loose consistency. And so about every 15 minutes or so, we are gonna continue to stir Ooh, the steam for about another hour or an hour and a half. All right, it has been two additional hours since we pureed our mixture. And you can see it is very thick at this point. And as it um, holds up to my, my spurtle here, it is very thick and it comes off in one kind of um, plop when I pour it as opposed to running. Now, if you're not sure when yours is ready, your apple butter, because the longer you cook it, obviously the thicker it will be, and it will continue to thicken up as it cools. So another method that you can use to test it is, and I have did this a few minutes ago while it was waiting, is you could dip up one spoonful, and so I did one spoonful, and move it away from the steam and let it sit for about two to three minutes. Now this has been sitting for two to three minutes, and you can see it's perfectly on the spoon. And when I drop it, it is in one clump. And that's what you want. You don't want it running. So this apple butter is ready. We do need to let it completely cool and we can put it in containers and put it in our refrigerator that will last three, four, maybe five weeks. Um, probably won't last that long because we'll eat it. But I am not gonna process this but if you were interested in canning this in jars for an even longer use, you could do that. And I do have a peach jam recipe that shows how to can using your water bath method. And you're welcome to watch that because it will be about the same, um, same procedure as you would do. So check out my peach jam recipe and you could see how to can them if you choose. So let's get ready and let's sample this. I'm Stephanie, and this has been Steph Stow for today and yesterday. We've just finished making some great apple butter. Now, um, unbeknownst to the name, apple butter contains no butter. It gets the name because of its consistency. It's very thick, much like butter. And it's a fall favorite. Really, you can have it any time of the year because apples are always plentiful, but they're even more so in the fall. So I do hope you enjoy this recipe using the crock pot, which is very simple and easy to do. Remember the time you'll cook it after your 10 hours will determine how thick it will be and it'll continue to thicken as it cools. So to test it out, not only did I do that, but I just got finished making a big batch of biscuits and I'm gonna invoke some quality control and open my biscuits and pour some apple butter on there because you got to taste what you did. Look at that. Mmm, that's so good. <laughs> Quality control is necessary. So again, I'm Stephanie. This has been Steph Stove. For today, we made some great apple butter. Remember, give us a thumbs up. Click that subscribe so you can get more content like this. And be sure to drop me a comment and let me know where you're watching from. Remember, Steph Steph, we're making memories one dish at a time. Enjoy!